The Jack Benny Hour. Starring Jack Benny. With his guest stars, the McGuire Sisters. And his special guest, Danny Thomas. The Marquis family, Jack and those wonderful monkeys. With David Rose and his orchestra. Brought to you by Ben Russ, makers of today. The watch with the movement unconditionally guaranteed for three whole years. And by the Greyhound Corporation. It's such a comfort to take the bus. And leave the driving to us. And here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my special hour show. Mr. Burr, Mr. Now, Burr. tonight, no, please, we're Mr. going Burr, to have as guests... We're going to have as guests on our show. We're going to have people that... Mr. Burr, Mr. Raymond. Raymond Burr. Perry Mason to you, and I'll thank you to get off the stage. <laughs> but wait a minute. Raymond, I'm doing my show right now. Oh, no, you're not, Jack. This is my hour. The Perry Mason show goes on every week, just at this time. I, I know it does. I know it does. But look, but not tonight. You see, your sponsor relinquished the time. You heard them announce it. They relinquished the time to me. It's all been cleared. Well, nobody bothered to clear it with me. <laughs> Open the curtain, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. to me. I mean, they relinquish the time. This is my hour. This is very important to me. Important to you. If I don't go on tonight, a woman will hang. <laughs> Look at it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you can't let him do this to me. You heard somebody, this thing was sponsored. You're right. You're right. Mr. kind of a, a woman that understands men's problems, you see. This time was... Uh, really Your Honor, I'm... would you please instruct this intruder to stop badgering the witness? <laughs> I'm not badgering anybody. All I'm Please trying to do... Throw this agitator out. That is my own show. I didn't hire anybody. I didn't hire a judge or Let's continue the case. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, let me show you first uh, People's Exhibit A. Now, uh, as you recall, <laughs> <laughs> uh, insists on being in the courtroom. See, he sits down. But I don't have to sit down. This is my whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hire him. I didn't hire him. Or you, uh, you may proceed with your witness. Very well, Your Honor. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the witness has testified that she saw the act's murderer. Uh, now, miss, can you make a positive identification? Yes, I can. And isn't it true that the axe murderer is right here in this courtroom? Yes, he is. Would you please point him out for the court? Over there, the old man with the glasses. <laughs> I'm not even in this. <laughs> I came down here to do my show. You came down to do what? 
The show, the show for Greyhound Bus and, be and Ben Russ Watch. That's a new development. Do you, uh, do you have any evidence? Well, of course I have evidence. Bring in the witness. Step down, please. <laughs> Now, will you please tell the court in your own words, <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you not Lady Greyhound, America's first lady of transportation? <laughs> well, isn't it true that your motto is, it's such a comfort to take the bus and leave the driving to us? And isn't it true that for relaxation or peace of mind in bad weather, the only way to travel is by Greyhound bus? Well, isn't it true? Answer me. Stop browbeating your witness. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, to substantiate my case, here's Exhibit A. Look at that rain. Never fails whenever I plan a trip. Honey, I worry about you. Driving hundreds of miles alone in weather like this. Billy, come in out of that rain. Ah, uh, rain can't hurt a greyhound. Now, why didn't I think of that? Honey, that's a thought. Why not take a greyhound? You'll be able to relax and I'll feel much better knowing you're not driving, too. First time I've relaxed on a trip in years. Cost less than I thought, too. Sure glad I'm not driving in that. Relax. It's such a comfort to take the bus and leave the driving to us. Relaxing on a Greyhound. Ladies and gentlemen, I have it all straightened out now. I mean, Raymond Burr gave in a little, I gave in a little, and everything is just fine. Now, you know, there is a certain type singer that I've always been crazy about. I remember years ago, it was Sophie Tucker. And then along came Kate Smith. So tonight, I'm very happy to present to you 370 pounds of singing talent, the McGuire Sisters. A girl that was really, really wonderful, and I'm so happy that you're on this show with me. You know? Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. We're thrilled to be with you. Well, thank you. I mean it. It's just like Dorothy said. You're the most dynamic personality on television. Well, that's awfully sweet of Wait you. Wait a minute. I didn't say that. Oh, excuse me, honey. It must have been Chris who said you were the most dynamic personality on television. Oh. Didn't you, Chris? No, I didn't. Well, really, it doesn't make any difference. Dorothy, you must have said it. I'm sure Phyllis wouldn't have imagined it. I didn't say it. Phyllis, you must have said it yourself. Well, girl. I mean, why would I say a ridiculous thing like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so ridiculous about saying Jack Benny is the most dynamic personality on television? Nothing. I've said it hundreds of times. <laughs> Instead of arguing about who said what, why don't you get together again? That's a cue. <laughs> Two, three, four, all together now. Together! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you put together a special show like this, a lot of problems come up, you see. And uh, one of the biggest problems is how? How can you get all of this material into one hour? Well, I must tell you this afternoon what happened. After our dress rehearsal, we found out that we were 15 minutes too long. Now, when a crisis like this happens, something has to go, you see. And even though his name appeared 
in all the ads in the paper. Danny Thomas, is the, Danny Thomas graciously consented to bow out. You see, this great trooper. And so he is sitting in the audience. I'd like to have him take a bow and have you meet this wonderfully nice fellow for the great gesture that he made. Thank you very, very much, Danny, for bowing out. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Bowing out, I was pushed. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, he bowed out after four days rehearsal. <laughs> that story about the show is too long. It's not that it was too long. Just during dress rehearsal, I got too many laughs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, graciously bowed out. He locked my dressing room door and swallowed the key. <laughs> Graciously bowed out. And then he says to me, he says, my sponsors thought that there was only room on the program for one comedian. Now they got nothing. <laughs> oh, I love the story. He says, oh, you know how hard it is to put a show together. So hard. All of these empresarios, they make it like it's so hard. You know what I got to say to that? <laughs> I do these shows every week. Shh. Don't shush me, Elvis. <laughs> I'm on this network, too, you know. And what a big thing. His name is in the ad in the paper. The only way my name got in that ad was that I paid for it myself. <laughs> Danny, will you... I hope you never sell another Greyhound bus. <laughs> in the first place, we don't sell the buses. We sell the seats. If you sell all the seats, what do you do with the budget? <laughs> Look, stop being funny. See what I tell you? That's what I'm about. Stop being funny. Oh, what murdered me more than since I'm up, I may as well go all the way. What murdered me more than anything else, he comes up to me and he says, uh, uh, Danny. Now, you know, Danny. Uh, you see how he does with his hands. In the Heaven forbid it should be cold out. He wouldn't be able to say a word. He says, Danny, you know, actually, you, you haven't got the personality for a big special show. No personality. My nose alone is a spectacular. <laughs> Danny, will you stop? Will you stop making fun of me? I tell you, huh? Will you stop? <laughs> will you stop making such a great big thing out of it? I told you the show was 15 minutes too long, and it, your song alone ran three minutes. Oh, now, excuse me, lady, I'm <laughs> big with you. Now you're stepping on thin ice, buddy. That song runs two minutes and 25 it seconds. It ran three minutes. Two minutes and 25 seconds. Three Don't minutes, tell me. I know. <laughs> you wearing a watch? <laughs> this woman is loved. You can tell because she wears a Benrus embraceable. This woman is loved in some way or sometime. Someone has wanted to prove it. The occasion, you name it. Birthday. Graduation. Christmas. Anniversary. Baby. Or just for being there. Every Benrus embraceable is something special, something of value. Something to be proudly given, proudly worn, because it is proudly made. Consider, here is a fine watch, a Benrus watch, with the world-famous 17-jewel Benrus movement. Here, too, is a piece of fine jewelry, styled with elegant simplicity, or crowned by shimmering diamonds. Above all, here is the famous Benrus unconditional guarantee of quality. Your Benrus watch movement must run perfectly, or Benrus will repair it or replace it free and fast. This Benrus guarantee will be honored for three full years. In fact, is you'll get a whole lifetime of faithful service. 
For a Benrus Embraceable is just that fine a watch. Your jeweler has Benrus Embraceables for as little as $35. You will never find a better way to give something of value. And to get on with the program now, I, um, I, excuse me a minute, there's something bothering me. I just thought of something. Pardon me, is Raymond Burr still around there? Raymond? Oh, there, Raymond. Raymond, would you come out here? Yes. Just a minute. Uh, Raymond, uh, backstage, uh, during the uh, commercial, I heard Danny Thomas discussing some, talking with his agent, you see, and because I didn't want him on this show, uh, Danny was going to sue me. Oh, wait a see? minute, Jack. Let me stop you. No, I'm just an actor, not a lawyer. Well, I, I know, I know, but you see, you've been doing the Perry Mason shows uh, so many years, you see, that I, I thought that you'd know all about law and procedure and everything, and I thought that maybe... Well, you know what I mean. I mean. Mm hmm You're trying to get some free advice. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong in a, in a fellow actor helping me out. No, uh, Jack, tell me, why are you always trying to get something free? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, let me ask you this. In 1936, when Lou Ayers was making the Dr. Kildare show and playing Dr. Kildare, did you or did you not have him remove your appendix? <laughs> that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is if they are going to sue me. You know, have they got a chance that Danny's going to sue me? Has he got a chance of winning? Well, did uh, Danny sign a contract for the show? Well, yes, yes. And did he, as you said, graciously bow out? <laughs> well, not, uh, I mean, uh, not exactly, but there were no witnesses. Well, then in court, it would be just your word against his. Yes. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> Well, why not? Who'd believe an axe murderer? <laughs> now, cut that out. An axe murderer. Listen, Jack, you wanted my advice? Uh, well, let, me, let me tell you. Why don't you just get Danny out here and let him do something on the show? Well, now I'm embarrassed. Would you I'm want ashamed. me to handle it for well, you? Well, I wish you All would. Right. Danny, Danny Thomas, would you come out, please? Yes, I mean, Uh, Jack, Jack feels that when he dispensed with your services on the show, it was with no malicious intent. And he is quite willing to apologize to you, as long as the apology is not construed as a prima facie admission of guilt. <laughs> as, uh, as Jack's fiduciary, <laughs> I am further empowered to state that in the interest of non pro tunk he, Jack Benny, is quite willing to allow you, Danny Thomas, to perform your duly constituted services, uh, thereby precluding any further litigation and completing full restitution without recourse to quid pro quo. Do you understand what I mean? I still haven't figured out what to do with the buses after they sell all the seats. Danny, what I'm trying to say is that Jack does want you on the show a little later on. Oh? Uh, would you just shake and make up with him? I'll be glad to. Good, Danny. Thank you, Jack. You know, this really makes me feel good. I, I don't think I've felt this good since I had my tonsils taken out. <laughs> oh, Lou Ayers? <laughs> Richard Boone. <laughs> oh, when he was on Meta. No, not when he's on Medic, on his present show. He shot him out. <laughs> hey, 
That's very funny. Yes, uh, yes, Danny, it is funny. You know, no wonder the McGuire sisters said you were the most dynamic personality on television. <laughs> oh, hit. Well, I'm glad that's settled. <laughs> Tell you what. You can come on and uh, right after this next act. Right. You can come on and do yours. All right? Fine. Okay, fine. Thank you. So long. Raymond, you thank you very, very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, about, oh, quite a few months ago, I did a show very similar to this one, you see. And it was an hour show like this, and I had a lot of stars on it, but one of the most important acts on the show was called the Marquis Family, and those were those wonderful monkeys that practically stole the show. And I got so many lovely telegrams and letters and a lot of comment, and they wanted them to see, they wanted us to repeat that segment of the show. So I'm going to bring them to you now, those wonderful monkeys, the Marquis Family. Wait a minute. Ladies. Hold it, hold it, hold it, David. Hold it. Wait a minute, Big Daddy. Just a minute. <laughs> oh. 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 said old Daddy. You know? <laughs> no, but, but you said I'd go on right after the next act, and you just announced the Marquis family. I'm not going to follow those monkeys, buddy. <laughs> not me. No, no. Listen, you get re ruined in this business following an act like that. It ruined my whole career. I'd have to have my head examined to follow those monkeys. I would be completely forgotten. What are you talking about? The last time I had the monkey act on, Bob Hope followed them. Bob who? Bob Hope. <laughs> yeah, I forgot him already. <laughs> I won't do it, Jack. All I right. just won't. Well, then... Fiducia! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Fiducia? You know what it meant? Look at Daddy, look at I'll tell you what. <laughs> I swear he didn't know what <laughs> You do your act any time you feel like it in the show, all right? Fine. You satisfied? Well, you happy? All right. Thank you. Any time, all right. Good. Hello. For the most dynamic personality in show business, he certainly worries a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the Marquis family. see someone you know. <laughs> All right, come over here and sit down. Sit down there and don't move, eh? Now, be a good boy. Do all the tricks right, we need the money. I've got two governments to support. <laughs> come here, Junior. You come over this other side. <laughs> smile, son, smile, smile. <laughs> Would you like to do an impression of Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley, quick, quick. <laughs> don't overact, son, don't overact. Here, you come over here and sit down. Where's the other one gone? <laughs> Dressing room. All right? 
Don't look down the hole, no boy. Come down here and sit down. All right? Don't look down the hole. <laughs> Ride this, son. You come here. Up. Ride the bike. All right? Don't play around. They might think you're a monkey. <laughs> come on. Go, 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 go. That'll do. That'll do. Don't make it look too easy. Is that a sign? <laughs> Sit still, you. And you. <laughs> Son, don't go out the picture. Look where you're going. Look where you're going. Look. Look where you're going. Oh, <laughs> I'm Lady Greyhound, living symbol of the Greyhound Corporation. When my nose is cold, that's a sign of health. When yours is, ooh, that's a sign of winter. Time to pop on your furs and start planning that winter vacation. To Mexico, love it in winter. Florida or California, the Mardi Gras. Wherever you go, it's a doggone good idea to let Greyhound help you plan it. Like this. Winter. Time of snow, rain, and wind. A time you so often spend inside looking out, dreaming of the sun and the warm balmy air, of summer sport, and vacation far from tension and care. But why settle for a dream when the real thing is well within your reach on a fun-filled Greyhound winter vacation? Remember, a Greyhound vacation costs less than you think. Enjoy Greyhound Scenic Cruiser service. Ride straight through, no change of bus, while someone else does the driving for you. Pick your spot. Greyhound takes you there, far from tension and care. Relaxed, ready for the fun. Relax. It's such a comfort to take the bus and leave the driving to us. Relaxing on a Greyhound. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, my contract with the Greyhound Bus Company covers more than just doing the shows, you see. So if you're going to the mountains or the sea, take a Greyhound bus and leave the driving to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not very long ago in the world of show business, actors and actresses confined themselves to the business of acting. In recent years, however, the trend has changed. Today, some of our foremost actors have branched out into other fields, have become rather successful businessmen. For instance, uh, Fred Astaire owns a dance studio in Santa Monica. Art Linkletter owns a bowling alley in Hollywood. Peter Lawford and Frank Sinatra own a restaurant in Beverly Hills. Bing Crosby owns Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, and Hollywood. <laughs> Noticing the success of Art Linkletter's bowling alley and the restaurant owned by Frank Sinatra and Peter Lawford, Danny Thomas and Jack Benny, not to be outdone, have opened a combination restaurant bowling alley. <laughs> Frank Sinatra and Peter Lawford do this. <laughs> I don't care what they do. When you're in a business, you have to work. And the more work we do, the more money we save. Uh, just, just listen to me. I, I'm thinking all the time. Well, you're thinking all right. <laughs> Who else but you would think of buying used butter from a ballpoint pen company? <laughs> You scrape off the writing, and who knows? <laughs> anyway, stop complaining. Look, at, we're doing great, Daddy. We're doing great. I mean, the, the restaurant is doing fine business, and the bowling alley is sensational. Once I told you a thousand times, kill them before you pluck them. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. It's a noise that's driving me crazy, positively out of my mind. You're so chintzy, you wouldn't spend $500 and let an architect design the place. No, you got to design it yourself. Who needs an architect? A bowling alley's a bowling alley, a restaurant is a restaurant. You just put them together, that's all. Yeah, put them together. Yeah. Where's the saw to fill these shapes? Out of there. Uh. <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm going to throw out the salt. You're going to throw the salt out? Yeah. Why? It's dirty. <laughs> well, put it in the pepper shaker. <laughs> some customers, Daddy. We better wait on them, huh? I still say that was a ridiculous place to put the alley. There are customers in there. Let's go and wait on them. Will you please? Hey, hey. Yeah. how about something to eat? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, right away. I'll be right with you. Now, sir. What do you have? I'd like to have a piece of raisin pie. A piece of raisin pie? And a cup of coffee. And a cup of coffee, yes, sir. What do you have, sir? I'll have some of that tuna fish salad, huh? Anything else? 
I'd like my coffee now. Hey, hey, me too. Give me some coffee. All right. Hey, hey, come on. Make me some toast. Toast. Yes, yes. Side out, toast. There you are. <laughs> Before my coffee, give me uh, soup and some of those oyster crackers. Some of these oyster crackers? <laughs> They're dirty. Throw them away, Jack. They're too big for the pepper shaker. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Gee, bowling is fun. <laughs> hey, Max, hey, How about some sugar? Well, there's sugar right here. Well, I don't want that lump sugar. I want granulated sugar. Well, we haven't got any granulated sugar. Oh, here. <laughs> enough today to run into some buyers. Some buyers? Yes. Well, that's fine. Danny, if you want to quit, you can quit. I have you to. don't know a good business when you're in it. Well, and if we, we got, got new need. buyers, I'll take them. Bring them in. All right. All right. Come on, we'll bring them in. <laughs>
This is today. The new Benrus watch, unconditionally guaranteed for three years. This is today. The new Benrus watch, unconditionally guaranteed for three years. This is today. The new Benrus watch, with a movement unconditionally guaranteed for three years. This is today by Benrus for $25. A watch that sells for less can't be made like today. With its 17 jewels, 17 points of protection. A watch that sells for less can't be guaranteed for three whole years. Today's three-year guarantee means that for three years you won't spend one cent for repairs. This is today in a man's dress watch, in a beauty watch, in a waterproof watch. Buy today at $25 by Benrus at your jeweler's. That last commercial was very, very interesting. And now I'd like to have you meet that uh, skin diver that does all of that underwater swimming. Mr. Morley, would you come out here, please? <laughs> Morley, uh, do you feel all right? Never felt better. Uh -huh. Well, do you... Uh, do you do this skin diving very, very often? Oh, I've been skin diving for several years now, Jack. It's a wonderful sport. It is. And nothing unusual ever happens to you? <laughs> unusual? <laughs> no. What could happen? The Benrus today is waterproof. It has 17 jewels. It's guaranteed for three full years and only costs $25. <laughs> I don't know. And nothing happened to you today? <laughs> well, now, it's strange that you should mention that because when I surfaced, I did have a feeling that something was wrong. But you had a feeling that something was wrong? <laughs> then I put my Benrus to my ear and it was still ticking. <laughs> and then, so you feel all right today? I never felt better, and if you'll excuse me, I'm anxious to get home. It's my wife's birthday. Oh. Well, do me a favor, don't hug her. <laughs> Now, I'd like to make a little announcement on my own, and that is that uh, next week I'm giving three violin concerts. Uh, one in St. Louis with the symphony orchestra, and one in Detroit, and uh, one in Rochester, New York. And I hope that I'll see all of my friends there. And by the way, I do want to thank the editors of TV Guide magazine for putting my picture on the cover. And they also had a nice article about me. And they had one line in it, it was wonderful. They said that I was the most dynamic personality on television. Oh, no, Mr. Benny, we didn't say that. Well, somebody said Tonight's cast were the Kane sisters, Mel Blank, Benny Rubin, Lester Matthews, Ray Hempel, Vicki Raff, Lois January, Bob Duggan. The Jack Benny Hour was brought to you by the Greyhound Corporation. It's such a comfort to take the bus. And leave the driving to us. And by Ben Russ, makers of today. The watch with a movement unconditionally guaranteed for three whole years.